Oh yeah, this display is not creepy at all. No, not in the least. Brick emotion. Hello, Claire here. Today I wanted to show you what I've done. <laughs> what have I done to mini doll heads? Because at some point I had so many of them, different ones that I couldn't keep all of them in my head. So when I try to make a new mini doll, I cannot just be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take Stephanie's face and Mia's torso and whatnot. No, three or four years ago, I could have done that. I have done that. That was fine. In the meantime, however, Lego has uh, come out with a many, many more mini dolls. Some of them even have some different facial expressions except for Happy? Not enough though, but I digress. Lego has come out with a lot of these faces and also I have painted some of them as well. And yes, I forget what I have painted. So my point is I do not know what I own and I do not want to paint something if I had already done that or Lego has done that. That's also a possibility. So what I have done is place one of each type of head that I have onto such a display. Now these are the female heads and I stash them here and then the shelf underneath are the male heads. As you can clearly see there are quite a few less male heads but I'm gonna show you how I did this on this example because it's more empty and I am less horrified that I'm gonna break something and everything is gonna fall off. So I have these plates. I'm hesitant to call them base plates because they are not base plates. They are not original Lego either. I have no idea what the brand is called but I heard Jang Bricks recommend them at some point, if not for actually building on them. They are not that good for that, but for like displaying things. So I ordered a bunch of those because they were way cheaper than the Lego original base plates and they came in way many interesting colors. And then for this display, I'm just using standard Lego black plates, just like this one so nothing fancy at all. I even deliberately use old black plates which even have some teeth marks on them because they are 30 years old and me from 30 years ago did not think about how in 30 years time I would want my Lego bricks to not have any teeth marks. But again I digress and then I'm using a semi-illegal technique to attach these ones onto the plate and that is I am simply pushing the plate between the studs not in a way that they are parallel but I shift them so the bumps from the black plate do not touch the bumps from the orange one and then I do that many many times with many different plates and ta-da this is what I have the heads are on these one by one round things with the bar and the mini pin hole. Mini doll head fits right onto them and then this part fits onto the studs of the plate. It is as simple as that. I do have to leave one stud in between the heads because the heads are bigger than one stud so they do need their breathing room. And that is basically all that you need to know on how to make these. If you have the need to do something like this as well, because it does look a bit creepy and I do not think it is a great display piece. Hence, I put them away here so nobody can have nightmares. But I do find it very useful to just like see what sorts of facial expressions I do have. Yes, most of them are, but some of them are kind of smirks, some of them are even angry, some of them are in weird colors, some of them I've already painted fangs on, and so on. I like to know what I'm working with at one glance, so this is what works really well for me. I have the rose 
with a certain eye color. Yes, there are a lot of blue colored faces, which I personally do not mind. Can you guess why? The original Lego faces are mixed in with my painted ones. Sometimes it takes me a while to even figure out if a face is an original or I've painted it or I have removed some print from it because, well, sometimes I do it that well. And then the bottom row is for the cartoony colored ones. Yes, this is a blank face that I did not create. This is a blank face that I bought as a blank face from a Bricklink seller. How they got it, I have no idea. But when I saw it, I had to order it. Of course. Here are also three Ariel's faces, two of which I believe are the same one, with the printing being off on one of them, just the tiniest bit, but it does make it look like those are two slightly different faces, and therefore I am keeping both of them here, because you never know when this slight printing mistake would come in handy for me. Do I have anything else interesting to note? This one is a good example of a mini doll face that I had painted, you know, this scar, and then completely forgotten about its existence. Other such faces are mostly the ones where I have removed either the freckles or the face print, just so I would have more variety in my mini doll faces. When Lego doesn't want to do it, then I feel it's up to me. I have apparently been painting a lot of male faces. Either I have painted on the facial hair or I have removed the tattoos from Lego Elves, added some freckles, a red nose, bushy eyebrows, and this might be my favorite plate. This is the original Lego head. And then all of these are just a painted version of this one. And unfortunately, this is the whole shelf of otherworldly male hats. So yeah, this is how I, well, not store, not display, have a hidden display of Vinidol <laughs> hats for the purposes of when I need to create a new character that I can quickly get a good sense of do I need to paint more than I absolutely need to? Until the next time you click on one of my videos. Bye bye. And this one. Um, yeah, that, that's not a um, mini doll. No. That's something for another time.